Guys, 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 please, please forgive me. I am so sorry that I've been away for so long. At first, I procrastinated, I admit. But then came the holidays and traveling. And then finally, when I was like, you know what? I finally have time. Thanksgiving break is the time for me. My computer died <laughs> and I had to buy a whole new computer. It was a mess, but I am here and we are ready because I need to talk about a lot of things that have happened in my absence. A lot of competitions I need to catch up on, a lot of just drama that I need to catch up on a lot of things that we need to talk about together and please 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 leave in the comments below anything that you want me to talk about my plan for now is to kind of talk about all the competitions I missed today we're gonna be talking about Grand Prix de France because that was the last video I was doing so I have my notes and then I'm gonna do Cup of China Grand Prix Finland and NHK trophy in my next video and then hopefully we can do one video just for the Grand Prix final which is just a few days away before I get into to anything competition related though, I need to talk about some things, some housekeeping, some drama, like Yuzuru Hanyu announcing that he is a divorcee. He is getting a divorce. He is literally divorced. Like, I don't know what else to say. He dropped on us like a K-pop idol from second gen that he was married. I was waiting for that pregnancy announcement because I've been primed by my K-pop idols to just expect that within 48 hours, two to three business days after the marriage announcement but instead what we got was no less than three months later a Kim Kardashian if you will announcing that he is getting a divorce and I am just shocked about it and the reasoning is actually really sad he states that the reason that he is getting a divorce is because people have been essentially shit they have been shit to him and his partner and the behavior is what has led to his divorce I am sure that that is a big part of the reason but I refuse to believe that that is an enough to break you and the love of your life apart. I feel like this was just the biggest reason, but there were other trickling reasons why this marriage did not work out. That is my personal opinion, my psychoanalyzation that nobody asked for. But let's read this public statement that Yuzuru Hanyu just put out. <laughs> I still can't get over the fact that he's got married and now he's divorced. Like, Yuzuru Hanyu really did that. We really did that. Like, wow, him and the housewives are just out here wilding out. He says, to everyone, I have a personal update I would like to make. As you know, I married a non-celebrity earlier this year. We were truly in love with each other, mutually respected each other in such a way that made us feel determined to live the rest of our lives together. Even when things got to the point where my partner was not able to step outside without being harassed, she continued to support me. Currently, various media outlets, in quotation, Shady have been conducting themselves in an untoward behavior such as verbally harassing, stalking, and doing unauthorized interviews with her. I have yet to see any footage of that. I don't know if it has been released at all, but I believe Yuzuru. Related parties and even our families have been harassed and stalked in these unauthorized interviews. Much private information has been disclosed and even in the safety of our own home, we have sometimes been subject to suspicious people coming by or even screaming at us. We were at a complete loss at what to do. Japanese fans, if there are any, please let me know if you have seen this and if this was well known before this divorce announcement because I am baffled by the fact that this was just going on in his life and that so many people knew where he lived, knew who the person was, because this feels like very anonymous to me, this person. Person. Like, I have yet to see any indication of who it is. Regardless, he continues, As things worsened further, I could no longer stand continuing as they were and was at a complete loss on how we could move forward in a way that would ensure both her happiness and freedom. It was at that point that we made the difficult decision to part ways. As such, I ask that all the harassment, stalking, and various problematic behaviors, not just towards my former partner, but all related parties, both our families, stop at once. Thank you so much for your continued support. That is heartbreaking. You know when celebrities are like, our schedules were just too busy so we broke up and you're like yeah that was one of the biggest reasons because your life was incompatible but I'm always there's always a part of me that is like mm, yes but also you guys were probably already on the rocks or rocky I feel the same way about this like this sucks and I hate that people have driven this relationship to be such a burden on their lives you know love is supposed to be celebrated I never understand when people get jealous of the people they love being in love because I just fall in love with the relationship and the partnership and 
instead these people get jealous and, and angry and I, I'll never get that. But let me know if you knew of this person. I'm just shocked that people even had that information because Yusuf Rouhani is such a private person. Like let me know if you knew like that this was going on behind the scenes and you saw this coming. Because I've been just baffled by both announcements. The marriage and the divorce. I was not expecting either one and it sucks that this is kind of the, the trajectory that a now retired Yusuf Rouhani has taken and that the updates that we get are not like fun updates like he's doing a new ad he's become a spokesperson or he's doing a show or a documentary no it's he's married and three months later he's divorced it is wild and it was hit in the face by both announcements like they were just i did not see them coming it was staggering another thing i want to talk about is evgenia medvedeva the love of my life has released her documentary medvedeva versus medvedeva i have yet to see anything online on how to watch it besides theaters or maybe some russian site if anyone and i mean anyone gets their hands on this documentary papa please send me the link and papa please translate it because i need to see this documentary i promise i won't share it i just need to see it with my own eyes and if there is a legal way to purchase rent or stream this documentary please also let me know i just i don't know what is in this documentary all i know that it is from her time her more tumultuous time which is when she had just left russia gone to canada and had begun her journey of being her own person being her own skater not just you know the favorite of team tutberitze or the star of the Tutberice or the girl who got silver at the Olympics, you know, all of that. She kind of was escaping it and forming her own persona. And I want to know exactly how much new footage, how much raw footage we're getting from that time. Was a camera really following her around? Are we just getting more interviews with like competition footage and iPhone footage here and there? I, I just want to know how much she's putting out there. I have yet to read any sports.ru um, articles about it. I don't know if there have been some bombs that have been dropped in this uh movie i am really trying to see it first before i read any article headlines but if i have to resort to that i will <laughs> because curiosity will always kill the cat when it comes to me and my Vietnam. and yeah those were the two bigger ones and like i said today i want to talk about the grand prix de france because it was the last competition i watched before i dropped the ball and then my computer dropped me so let's get into it the grand prix de france was a while back but i still enjoyed it i still got my notes and i still remember it and I rewatch it just for this video. First thing I want to talk about is Wakaba. This is the first time, I believe this is Wakaba's first outing of the season and the crowd including myself was just as ecstatic to see her back in the mix of things. I feel like we all missed her and sadly we did not get that Lion King magic, at least not with my eyes because while she looks in good shape for the beginning of the season, there was still some like minor stability issues here and there and I just, for me both her programs were lackluster. I don't know what else to say say specifically the music choices felt basic. Wakaba is someone who after having the breakout program of last season I feel like she should have something to follow up that that is at least at a similar level. These both were just letting me down like a short program with Coldplay. Coldplay? No. Not not good enough for my Wakaba. I know what you can do and Coldplay will not cut it. I admit maybe I feel this way just because I'm comparing it to the Lion King program but so far neither the short nor the free make me feel anything. Like the Lion King paired with her beautiful triple axel is a magic that I want to relive every day and she's not giving me even half of that. By the way, the triple axel she abstained from doing at this competition, which I honestly think is a good enough reason if she's still building it up, if she's coming back from injury. I feel like we'll see it soon enough. I just want to see it back in its all its glory. Maybe that'll help ease me into her new programs and even start to like her musical choices. Not that I'm not a Coldplay fan, but not this song not with Wakaba, all right? Currently, I see her in a great position, in a great position to just improve throughout the season. Mind you, I haven't watched the rest of the competitions, so hopefully she does improve in the rest of the Grand Prix season. Regardless, Wakaba ended in fifth place, and maybe a clean performance of both programs will make me change my mind, but right now, I doubt it. Then we got Hayen Lee, who ended up in fourth place, surprising to me, maybe not surprising to anybody else, but for the short, I don't know if it was the combination of the worn out green color plus the music choice but the vibe was giving me like insecure tinkerbell also matched with like hesitant jumps that she had in the short program and hesitant spins it did not help it was giving me like tinkerbell but she's like scared of her magic if that makes any sense and hey and lee to me looked like she wasn't gonna be near the podium 
at all after that show program. But in the free, she came in strong. The thing I liked the most was definitely the song and the dress I don't totally hate. But even though the free turned out to be way better for her, the skating still made me nervous because there were some wobbly and landings here and there and a pop jump. But compared to her short, her confidence was through the freaking roof. And that is what transmitted itself into the ice, where she gave it her all, especially with the ending choreography, redeeming herself from the short, at least in my eyes. And I think it might be the reason why I liked her free skate music is because she was delivering. The confidence was oozing out of her. And <laughs> even though she was confident, the music was intense and it matched my nervous energy slash intense energy that I felt watching her. Because after the short, I was nervous for her. But the free won me over and I guess it won over the judges because like I said she ended up in fourth place which to me is a great position for Hayley. Hopefully this just means we keep going higher. Slow and steady wins the race. Then we have Ryan Sumiyoshi or Ryan Sumiyoshi. I don't think that I remember this girl at all but she was very interesting for me to see because this girl was a curious case because when I saw her name in third place I was like okay Japanese girly with amazing technique and programs probably. Let's see. But then I saw her short and she had a really bad fall and I was confused. I was like, how did this girl make it to the podium at all? Her programs were lackluster, her jumps were unstable and the stage presence was questionable at best. But then in the fucking free, things got better. But still not like insanely better. It was nothing out of the ordinary. And then in the blink of an eye, I'm literally checking my phone and I look up and I just hear she's landed the quad toe loop and I heard quad? Quad? I had to rewind that back. This this girl landed a quadruple jump, not a Russian lady, still a female skater, just randomly landing a quadruple jump in the competition, a name I didn't even have in my head that I don't recognize. This is not something I was expecting at all. And I was like, oh my God, this is why she got third place because she landed a quad. Like I was just so baffled because I was not expecting anyone. And I mean anyone to land a quadruple anything at this competition, let alone the entire Grand Prix season, because I just have been accustomed to expect that only from the men, sadly, and then the Russian ladies who've got these quote unquote super powers that come out of Tukbenitsa's hands. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I was just so baffled. And then I, I couldn't, I was glued to the screen. I couldn't watch, I couldn't look away. And landing that quad also seemed to ignite something within Rion because as soon as she hit that, the rest of her program had a newfound energy and charisma, which was missing from her short. The nervous Tinkerbell was gone. And now she just had landed this quadruple jump I was baffled and she was just thrilled and everything just seemed now easier for her and the free ended triumphantly like she hit that climax with her hands above her head and like almost a success pose a triumphant pose and it was just crazy to see like I don't know it took me aback and it was such a fun <laughs> I don't know I had so much fun watching her skate because I didn't expect anything and I was so in tune being like what is it about this girl that got her on the podium and then she did that and it was such a plot twist for me. Also, she had the best reaction afterwards in the free, like crying, just tears of joy. And you know, nothing makes me more endeared to a skater than a beautiful, happy celebration at the end of a clean program. And she landed a quad in a competition. That is insane, especially for someone who has just kind of splashed onto the scene, at least in my eyes. Let me know if you guys had her in your view before this, because I did not. So Ryan Sumiyoshi, I started this competition not knowing your name. And now not only do I have my eye on you, but I feel like the whole world has your name on their lips as a talent to watch, a rising star, because she, if she can do that again in multiple competitions, girl, everybody watch out. The only bad thing for me is that the short should have been clean, and then probably she could have maybe even fought for a second place, which is insane. Then we have another new name, at least for me, even though it sounds familiar, so maybe I've talked about her before, but it felt like a new name, Nina Pizzarone, which I don't know why that reminds me of, uh, I think that means bored in Italian, like not bored but like like chalkboard. Maybe I'm wrong. Here, Nina is another Belgian skater entering the ice, giving Luna Hendricks some company by holding the Belgian flag high in the figure skating world. And this was Nina's first senior competition, according to the announcer. And I believe it is my first time seeing her on the ice, so that would make sense. I didn't love her short program dress, nor the program itself. Then in the free, I still wasn't floored by her performance. I, I don't know. Something about Nina didn't win me over. Maybe it was the fact that I just didn't like the programs. I do think she's a beautiful skater. I do think she has a lot of potential. What excites me about her is the potential that she has because she's young, if this is truly her first senior season. And I love that she's also from Belgium because I love when countries start showing 
depth in their skaters, start showing that there's kind of a plethora of skaters that are ready to take the ice. It excites me. It tells me that the sport is growing, which is all I want. However, the thing with Nina with me is that I feel like she didn't deliver the star power that Lunda Hendricks has just naturally. And to top it all off, I feel like her movement was a little bit stiff, although that just could just be me. But I feel like her choreo was not being delivered. Maybe she was nervous, but I feel like her, it, it was just not giving what it should have been giving. Although she was very stable in her jumps and she was confident in her movement, which is what confused me because I still found her stiff. She was given confident, but stiff. So maybe it's just more of a practicing her choreo and her skating skills a little bit more. But like I said, I'm just really happy to see this girl and know that she's from the same place as Luna Hendrix and knowing that maybe she is inspired by Luna Hendrix and Luna Hendrix's success is already having ripple effects in the skaters of Belgium as they are now seeing that they have a chance to be on the podium at these big international competitions. So I'm excited for Nina, her potential, and I'm still a little confused on how she got on the second podium, but I guess the competition here was more of like who messed up, who did good, who didn't. I know that's the case for every competition, but I these two new names on the podium kind of took me by surprise and both of them kind of left me with the same like okay let's see what let's see at the next competition so i was just kind of shocked that they were on the podium because it, nobody really floored me per se and there's usually a standout but i couldn't really find one here maybe rion with the quad axle but then the rest of the program didn't floor me i don't know all that to say that our first place is a familiar name isabel levito isabel levito is having an interesting season because she's always so close so close it feels like in skate america it was the only time where she kind of got it and here she is once again so close and that always hurts me specifically because i really want my whole goal is to just get people into the sport the whole basis of this channel is to get people interested specifically my friends hasn't worked yet but to get people into the sport interested and isabel can be such a good gateway for the united states for that and the fact that she's always so close even though she got first in this competition but the fact that she's always so close at being perfect ugh, it's so irritating anyways her short is still not my cup of tea but i can tell that it's beginning to grow on the audience and the judges and i genuinely believe that i still don't like it because of the music choice i don't think i have a problem with the snake like motif theme situation and i actually don't really hate her costume even though i don't like it i don't hate it it's not an eyesore i think it's just the music it doesn't really go anywhere so this program will never grow on me but she did have a great short and she looked ecstatic which always makes me happy then in the free in the free she had a harsher outing because she was barely like barely holding on to some jumps to the point where like i'm worried about her knees and of course her back and then she fell out of a spin which terrifies me to the core because usually that means injury if you're falling out of a spin which all you have to do <laughs> i'm acting like i know how to skate but usually a spin is is a, is a element that should be a little bit safer if you're falling out of a spin it usually means injury and this terrifies me because this girl is so close she's so close please lord don't let this girl be injured and have to step away hopefully her back and her ankles are okay but she looked absolutely devastated and mostly in shock at the fact that she had that very last minute mistake because it was one of the final spins and then she's all of a sudden just kind of fell out of it like wobbled out of it it was so weird and yet with all of that she still ended up in first place and that's what i mean by this competition was kind of made up of people's mistakes like everybody faltered in a way so just kind of how the, the 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 dominoes fell the cards were laid out the cookie crumbled i don't know which saying is correct but you know what i mean it just kind of ended up this way i'm curious to see what would have happened if these group of skaters had all had clean skates for both the free and the short because i feel like there would have been a lot of shifting and changing in the positions not too crazy but everybody would have been in peril of changing up or down regardless isabeau even with that last final kind of freak accident freak mistake she still ended up in first place which tells you a little bit about the state of ladies figure skating where everybody's just kind of like trying to hold on it's just not as strong as the male scene right now which is a little bit annoying moving on to the men's skates here we have an honorable mention for Boyang Jin, our Chinese king. He ended up in eighth place, which seems to be a regular placement for Boyang Jin these days. And I don't really know what else to say besides that. Like he was I, and I'm hoping that he can kind of get back up there because we just haven't really seen him even near a podium in these days. Hopefully that changes. Then we had the reason that I got most excited besides Wakaba. My little baby, Yuma Kakiyama is back. And he ended up in third place. I just loved to see him. And know that he's back because he's truly a player, a competitor for all the top boys. He is a talent. He is the future of Japan in my eyes because he's so young and has such a long career ahead of him. And Shoma Uno is at his best.
us. But after Shoma Uno comes Yuma Kageyama right up his little coattails. <laughs> Not that his coattails will be little because Shoma is little even though they would be. But you know what I mean. In this competition, he showcased his programs and I like them just not as much as his other ones. I feel like Yuma has yet to find like his signature program. He hasn't had like that one. He's just kind of trying on different personalities. And I feel like both of these programs are just not it in terms of giving him his moment, but they're not bad programs. They're, they're okay programs. They just didn't speak to me. Nothing's really speaking to me this season. It's kind of sad. However, knowing that Carolina Costner, the Carolina Costner helped put these programs together just warms my heart and tells me that it is going to grow on me because nothing gets a program to grow on me more than emotional attachment. And I am definitely going to get attached to these programs quicker because of the association to Carolina because I just love, there's nothing I love more than seeing a big established name like Carolina Costner helping the newer generation. I love it also with Stefan Lambeau and Shuma Uno and it just warms my heart and I can't wait to see their interactions throughout the rest of the Grand Prix as well. And seeing how fruitful having an older, more experienced skater, but it's still kind of in the know, you know, not too old like a Brian Orser who was, you know, a few generations ago, but more like a Stefan Lambiel. Seeing how fruitful that has been for Shoma Uno gets me excited about this partnership. I really think that this could be, you know, a stepping stone, a growing era for little Yuma Kageyama. So I can only hope that we see this tutelage between them two kind of foster and give him stability just as it has with Shoma Uno. And yeah, his skating was not at his best, but he's also returning back to the scene after a long break due to an injury. So for Yuma Kageyama, his journey is meant to be slow and steady rise. And I am here for all of it, for seeing it just in the next few competitions, seeing that he is slowly but steadily getting better and more confident on the ice. Also, just extremely excited to see Carolina Costner. <laughs> I'll admit that. Then we had, surprisingly, at least for me, in second place, Ilya Malinin, who had a sudden fall in the choreography of all places. Like his jumps were solid, but he lost balance in the choreo of the short like it was just so funny and the way he took it like a champ and laughed about it made it all the more endearing i am really growing to love Ilya this season and speaking of programs that i'm just not connecting to Ilya is one of the few skaters that has two programs that i actually really loving and i think it's mostly because Ilya is finally kind of just giving himself into them he is fully trying to portray them on the ice and seeing his growth this was making me excited about these programs and i like both musical choices but there's a latin one and we all know that i like latin programs in his free he's still restraining himself from doing the quad axle which i think is smart because he just needs to get stronger and be steady and get make sure that he is having a high position in his competitions for the grand prix final and then he can reinstate it later on it is a very very tricky jump that doesn't really bear as many fruits as you think in terms of points but it is still an amazing thing that he's the only person in the world that can do it so when he can he should and i'm sure that he's going to try and reinstate it later on in the season but for now i'm happy that he's keeping the quad axle, also known as the quaxle, out of the situation. His free was good, and I love all his programs. And honestly, I just get the most joy out of seeing him grow as a performer because he's just so skilled technically that I no longer feel nervous for his jumps. Unless he's doing the quad axle, I, I feel just calm watching him, to be completely honest. And maybe that's the reason why I like watching him skate so much, is because I don't have to worry about him. He's not a chaotic baby like Shimono once was. He and Adam Shahimfa is. <laughs> we'll get to him. In a minute um and he is not someone who is known to be nervous later on in the season like a amber glenn or a um isabel levito as it is turning out to be but i just feel at ease and i and i love that he is so confident and carries the the name of the goat not as a burden like i am really always baffled by his mental strength and even to the point where a mistake is now endearing to me because he just takes it as a laugh like he knows he's that good that he can just be like ah ha 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 you know what i'm saying like it's just very very much endearing to me this was a great outing nothing really went truly awry and if he had been completely clean and had the quad axle he would have been in serious competition for first and even then when he didn't have all these things at this competition you know he was unstable in some areas and he didn't have the quad axle he was still in the running for first but mr adam shall him fa came freaking through because if you want to talk about stage presence dance skills and showmanship then we got to talk about none other than our winner our first place our hometown hero Adam Xiao Hin Ba I forget if I said that I love his short already but I love his short especially the musical choice and how he hits 
just hits every note. I don't love the DV. It is given kind of like outdated 70s costume, but I love everything else about his short program, like everything else. He has a beautiful show program that just showcases him to perfection. His skills in skating, his skills in performing, his just also tricks that he can pull, the arabesque, the cartwheel. Everybody loves a cartwheel. And I just, the short program was a good time. After he did that, I was like, please Adam, keep it together because we all know that Adam is not known for keeping it, you know, clean, clean, clean all the time. So for his free, I was nervous. But even his free program, which is still very odd and weird to me and its story and movement was spectacular. However, unlike Yuma Kagiyama, where I feel like I'm going to grow to like them, I don't think I'm ever going to grow to like this program. It's just never going to be one of my top programs. It's never going to be a program that I want to rewatch, but it is a beautiful program to watch because Adam Shohenfa makes it beautiful with his tricks, his skills, and his performance. I don't know. I feel like this music is too quirky and too many skaters have tried to give their own like quirky choreo interpretation of it. And for some reason, the only thing that's growing on me is his grandma couch looking costume. <laughs> for some reason, it's not ugly to me anymore. I don't know. Something about it is, is, is going on my good side. I do love that he had a clean skate in both programs and just the thing about him that is so entrancing is the amazing power, like the strength that he manages to display while having very much controlled movement, not just in his jumps, but his like choreography and everything. Because if you really want to be honest, Adam Shauhimfa has Ilya Malinin beat in terms of skating skills and that is why he took the crown here because he was clean and his skating skills are just undoubtedly better than Ilya Malinin. However, let's say Ilya Malinin had the Quaxel and had a clean skate in both. It's really a, a toss of the coin of who's gonna get it. But if Adam Shohimfa, we all know that if you skate cleanly for multiple competitions, the judges will reward you because now you're showing stability. So if he continues to be clean, then I honestly think that Ilya can't beat him if he's just clean for the next competitions because the judges, the composition scores will just go up and up and up. But regardless, I feel like Adam Shohimfa at this competition got to have his moment in his home crowd, which I always love when people get to have the win in their own country. And I love that the crowd was behind him because I am behind him. I love his short program enough to overlook the free program and cheer for him. And even though I do think that Ilya Malinin is still the number one in the world in terms of ranking and skill, Adam Shohimfa could very easily beat him if Ilya Malinin does not keep it together. However, the only shock that Adam did bring me is that I forgot that he is coached by the villain of the Spice World as well. Him and Brady Tanell and I believe Nina Pizzarrone or Ryan Sushumi, one of the other girls is also being coached by him. And every time I see him, he's like a cartoon character. He's wearing the exact same thing, which is, you know, the black trench coat and those freaking signature sunglasses. And so he looks exactly like the paparazzi from Spice World. Like, you can't look me in the eye and tell me that that is not the villain from Spice World. Look at this picture. Look at this other picture. What is the difference? There is no difference. <laughs> so hopefully this man brings good fortune to Adam Shauhinfa, just as he did for Brady Tanell in that one competition. And yeah, that was my recap of the Grand Prix de France. In the next video, I will be covering Cup China, Finland, and NHK. And then in the video after that, we'll be covering the Grand Prix final. Let me know anything that I missed because I'm sure I missed a lot in the comments which you would like me to talk about and I will talk to you guys later as always shout out to Tori, V, Timothy, Natalia, Leslie and I said that out of order but I think I said everybody I will talk to you guys later bye bye